Hey guys, welcome. So I just want to show you a little bit about how I'm doing uh, BlackBerry Dev. So I'm going to load up my Term 49 app, okay? And that's going to automatically open up an SSH server because I have it uh, programmed to do, su do such. And then I'm going to kill a bunch of tasks because if not, I, I won't be able to execute all this code. So I have it designed where when, time, when, when the app loads, a whole bunch of custom apps load up. So before I go any further, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill all the processes because there's there's quite a few. So I'm gonna go pi din ar grep python because all my processes are python, and then I'm just gonna start kill um, dash nine, and we'll say this one. Some of these are heavy. Uh, okay, kill. Oh no, that's process. Let's try it again. There it is. Kill dash nine. Okay, kill dash nine. Just, I wanted to show you this because it shows you a little bit about how I'm managing all these dis different processes. And what happens is when my dot profile loads up, a whole bunch of these tasks begin executing. And they're things like my chat GPT app, Rocket Chat. Um, some notification monitors. I even got a stock app here, like monitoring my stocks and whatnot. So I've got a lot of processes that load up. But uh, when you're running so many of them, uh, because the stock app is really intensive, it's like saving all this information to a database that it slows the, de the device down quite a bit. So I'm going to just double check and I've got the monitor. I'll just kill that last one and then we're good. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, I've got like a Linux uh, or Unix environment in which I can navigate. You know, I can, I've got LS, I've got all the things that you would you would want, right? So I could say make dir app two, um, and I can go into app two, and then I can like nano uh, test.py. And what we'll do here is we'll just copy over some hello world Python code I have saved. And uh, before I, quit out of here. I got to change the port because I think I'm using port 80. So we'll just do port, port 8019. And then I will go Python 3.12 test.py. And what you're going to see is, is the app's going to begin hosting and it's going to be live. And it's actually live on the device, right? So on this other screen, I'll just share quick. I've got Safari open. And I've got access to the Hello World application running on port 192.168.2.8. And, you know, that's how I'm building applications. So they run inside the web browser, right? And um, they're just Python apps. Now, I could build them out of C, and it might be more power efficient, but I'm used to Python. So, you know, building them out of that is pretty, pretty simple. Um, and I built a lot, right? Like, I've got... Um, GPT integrated into here. I've got uh, GPT is kind of neat. So I can say like GPT, uh, how are you? And, you know, I've integrated it into Bash. So it like it's inside my BlackBerry. And then I built a web app that integrates with that Bash code. Uh, probably not the most efficient, but whatever. Um, but a lot of people are interested in Telegram. So Telegram I built. Uh, so let's go up a directory LS, get into the root. So Python 3.12, navigate, it's buried. I don't know why I buried it so much, but I was actually testing to see if it was possible and then it became possible. And then I like, you know, I kept it there. So we'll go into Telegram. And so the di directory structure, I, I had to generate a session first and that's a you know pretty quick thing, but you have to authenticate with the API and then it sends you a text message and then you approve yourself. Um, but Right here, I'll just go Python 3.12 server.py and we'll wait for this to load up. So this takes a little bit of time for two reasons. Python 3.11 is way faster than Python 3.12. I'm not 100% sure why, but I'm trying to figure it out. Um, so when I load this app, it's quite big, but it would load within like two or three seconds before. But, you know, because it's you know, using this, it takes a little bit longer. So just beware that that's just a, a thing that you see. So let's share the screen where Python is running. Okay, 
So I'll share, share. And this is, you know, my Telegram app for, um, you know, my chat, right? So I can post messages in here and read messages. And I designed it in a way that was like BlackBerry friendly, right? That's all, it's just BlackBerry friendly. So it loads really nice on the Passport. And, you know, it works just like you would expect it to. Um, you know, I click on Telegram. There's my Telegram bot. I click on, you know, there and, you know, there it is. It's pretty straightforward. But that shows you a little bit of how I'm, like, running different applications, right? Like, I'm just building them out of Python with the newer libraries that does the get and post requests for me. And then I, I generate a web app. And, you know, it, it works pretty good. Like, you know, I've built, uh, I've built a lot of different things, but um, I don't see a limit really. Like if I keep installing and configuring and, and going through it, I think the only limitations are, um, you know, when, when you just get to like the camera and you get to like certain technology limits, right? Like within the platform itself, like I don't have access to native app development because that isn't possible but I do have access to almost native application development because I can run code on the device through term 49. So I've got a pretty good stack. Um, but let me show you something I figured out. So in inside of this, if we go up, this is the root file system of QNX, right? And so if I go up, 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 um, actually, I'll just go CD slash. Okay, these are all the system directories. Now, Inside of this, there's a couple interesting ones. One is PPS. So these are service endpoints for the device. Now, a lot of these are read only, but some of them are, you know, I can read from. One really cool thing is I plugged in a Raspberry Pi, or sorry, an Adreno and a Raspberry Pi, and I have access to serial. So I can actually send serial commands to it and, and program the device to accept them and build a little bit of an SSH session between them. And that's a whole fun world that I'll explore at some point. Um, like the fact that I can micro USB and get serial is really cool. But um, I spent a lot of time uh, hacking through this and I eventually figured out how to trigger notifications. And so let me just pull up my GitHub code that I have saved and I'll show you how this works. We'll just make an echo statement because notifications obviously is... Um, I mean, it, having hub notifications back, I don't know. To me, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so I'm pretty happy about that. But uh, I'll just show you what that code looks like, and then I'll show the notification on the device here. Triggering, and, and I also figure out how to trigger um, uh, vibrations too. So I'll send this message, an echo statement with a bunch of code. And then what will happen is we'll, we'll stop sharing for a second so you can maybe zoom in on the screen. Um, inside, you know, the BlackBerry started beeping with the, you know, with the red light or yellow light or whatever. And then inside of here in my hub, I actually have, you know, um, an empty, sorry, I can't really see it, an empty notification that, that showed up in the hub uh, just because I... Um, I executed code. So let me see if I can turn on my volume. I think it's off. Yeah, it's on silent. Okay, I'll turn on the volume and maybe you can hear it. So we'll hit the up arrow, send. And there it is, we'll do it again. There you go. So when I was building Telegram and, and my Rocket Chat app, um, what I had done was I, I wanted to make it so that the app was running in the background and then I could receive notifications, which it works. It works great. It's good. And, uh, and I use it for like getting my stock data. And there's a couple more things I need to like iron out and, and kind of hack out to figure out. Now it's important to say, I'm not hacking the BlackBerry operating system. I'm just using what's already there because of term 49. Right. So it's, it's, it's just discovering some endpoints that are read, write that I can trigger and do things with. And um, and because we don't want to hack the BlackBerry, it's really secure. <laughs> it's awesome, and and we don't want to we don't want to do any of that. But we want to utilize the device, you know, since it's kind of been abandoned by 
um, BlackBerry that it's fun to be able to code out different things. Um, so yeah, Python, you know, 3.12 is installed. I've got um, Python 3.11. I've got some, you know, other ideas. Uh, one of the coolest things I, I think I did recently was I I built an X driver. So like an X window driver where I could like run Android on an X server and then actually build apps that use it. And that was pretty interesting. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, it's a hobby project. It's interesting. It's fun. And I don't, uh, I don't know where it's going to lead to, but for all those with Blackberries out there that feel a bit abandoned and there's no like devices that have really come out to replace what they are, I think it's great. I think there's a lot of things we can do um, and have a lot of fun with anyways. So yeah, just wanted to give you guys a quick video and, and appreciate you staying around and watching and hopefully you learned something and, and now you know a little bit about what I'm up to.